grupito de niños azulosos de frío, ¿cómo os ven y nos cubren, Dios mío? Piececitos heridos por los guijarros todos ultrajados de nieves y lodos. Lucila Godoy Alcayaga, known to the world as Gabriela Mistral, was born on April 7, 1889, in Vicuña, the largest city in the Elqui Valley, located 500 kilometers to the north of Santiago, the capital of Chile. Her mother, Petronila Alcayaga, was a seamstress, and her father, Juan Godoy, was a teacher. He abandoned the family when Lucila was just three years old. When he left, her stepsister Emelina, a rural teacher 15 years her senior, had to assume the difficult responsibility of supporting her mother and young Lucila. While living in Monte Grande's schoolhouse, Lucila was surrounded by the majestic Andes Mountains and developed a deep love of reading and learning. She would recall this as the happiest time in her childhood. The magnificent landscape would offer the inspiration for her first writings. But when she was 11 years old, this idyllic life would come to an abrupt end when, while a student in Vicuña's upper school for girls, she was falsely accused of stealing school supplies. She was humiliated by her schoolmates and she would never again be enrolled in school. But she continued to read and write extensively. Her life was centered in the valley and its natural beauty inspired her to write her first verses at the tender age of 13. Encouraged by her mother, when she was 14 years old, she became a teacher's aide at a small school near the city of La Serena. It was during this time that her poems and letters were published by local newspapers. Enjoying not only being at school with the children, but also teaching, she decided to become a teacher and applied to La Serena's normal school to pursue a teaching degree. But she was denied entry as some of her published writings were perceived to be socialist. It was only after she moved to Santiago in 1910 when she took an equivalency exam to confirm her self-taught studies that she was granted legal recognition as a qualified primary school teacher. Although she did not have any formal studies, her vocation as a teacher was indisputable. Desde el origen mismo de su, de su vida, ella se enfrenta a la adversidad. Ella nace en un hogar que se desestructura cuando ella tenía muy niña, es decir, tres años y se va al padre, eh, en el seno de una familia pobre, en provincia y en condición de mujer. Para esa young woman, Gabriela would again experience sorrow with the suicide of her young lover, Romelio Ureta. This event would mark her style of writing, a style that would make her famous, a style in which death and love become the center of her poetry. Santiago discovered her in 1914, the year she won the top prize in the literary contest Juegos Florales for her poem Sonnets of Death. Years later, this poem would be the basis for her first book, Desolación, published in New York City. As of that moment, and in homage to two of her favorite poets, Gabriel D'Annunzio and Frederick Mistral, she used the pseudonym Gabriela Mistral in her writings. For 20 years, she was a teacher in over a dozen cities in Chile, but the world was waiting for her, and Mexico was her first stop. In 1922, she received an invitation from the Mexican government to participate in their educational reform project. Mexico fell in love with a rural teacher from Monte Grande, and the world was eager to welcome her as a lecturer and a diplomat. She was an advocate for equality elementary education and held important roles in the League of Nations and other international organizations. She inspired and encouraged women to demand their rights. She promoted the protection and respect of native people and farmers. She encouraged Latin American countries to unite, but above all, she promoted her beloved Chile in every corner of the world. Her numerous trips 
took her to Europe, the United States, and many countries in Central and Latin America. In 1930, at the invitation of Columbia University, she made her second visit to the United States to be a visiting professor of literature and Latin American history at Barnard and Middlebury Colleges. In 1945, while serving as Consul of Chile in the city of Petropolis in Brazil, she was awarded the most prestigious literary award in the world, the Nobel Prize. This would be the first time that a woman and a Latin American writer would be awarded this high honor. On December 10, 1945, the world met Gabriela Mistral when she received her Nobel Prize from the hands of Sweden's King Gustav V. In 1946, it was to Gabriela that the United Nations turned to to ask her to make the first worldwide appeal for funds for poor children. And it was with her appeal for children that UNICEF came into being. During the following years, she was a diplomat and a citizen of the world, being honored and celebrated by many nations. In 1951, six years after receiving the Nobel Prize, she received the National Literary Award in Chile. In 1953, she moved to New York, when she was appointed Consul General of Chile and while living in the city, Columbia University bestowed on her an honorary degree for her brilliant career. Her last journey to Chile was in 1956, but her frail health did not allow her to fully enjoy the love and admiration her country had for her but she traveled to the Alki Valley and visited Vicuña and Monte Grande one last time. Gabriela was happy and surprised by the love she was given. This would be her farewell trip to her native land. Upon her return to New York, although visibly ill, she attended the Pan American Conference in Washington, D.C. as the guest of honor. This would be her last public appearance. Her health declined rapidly and gravely. She died on the 10th of January, 1957. El mar sus millares de olas me se divino, oyendo a los mares amantes me su a mi niño. Just a few months before her death, Gabriela wrote her last will and testament in which she clearly stated that the children of Monte Grande were to be the sole beneficiaries of royalties from the publication of her works. Continuing this legacy is the central mission of the Gabriela Mistral Foundation in the United States. La misión de la fundación es favorecer a los niños del Valle del Alqui. En segundo lugar, el promover su obra, su legado y de manera particular en Nueva York. Ella en Nueva York vivió en distintas calidades, eh, en el consulado donde desempeñó labores, hizo clases en Columbia University, en Barnard College. Su primera gran obra fue publicada en Nueva York y finalmente donde vivió sus últimos días. The foundation is incorporated in the state of New York and was launched in September 2007 by Her Excellency President Michelle Bachelet. Our work in the Alki Valley is started with a donation of 500 children's books and an internet connection for the library of Corporación Monte Gabriela y Monte Grande. Acérquense a nosotros y los recibiremos con brazos abiertos para impulsar esta tarea que en definitiva es común y que será el mejor homenaje a nuestra gran poeta. Her ideas, her writings and her causes are as relevant today as they were 50 or 60 years ago. As a teacher, she belonged to Chile. As a poet, a diplomat, and an intellectual, she belonged to the world. But her desire was always to help the most vulnerable of all, the children of the world, the children of Monte Grande, the children from the Elqui Valley. We are a young but ambitious foundation, and it is with your help that we can make her dream a reality. Sobre mi 
pecho caído, ay de milagrosa, no pareces mí. Me dormí una noche, desperté con ella, que resplandecía caída en mis trenzas. Me olvidé del mundo y de mí no siento más que el pecho vivo con que te sustento. Yo sé de mí solo que ni te recuestas, tus fiestas, hijo mío, apagó las fiestas.